All right, we are back this morning. Josh Horn with the Social Security Administration is with us. Good to have him on as always. He's been coming on for a while and uh, you do a great job. We've had a lot of terrific people come from Social Security over the years, you know, and uh, and we've been going back a long mm -hmm. way. I mean, you know, Daryl Payne, yeah. you know, and, uh, and James Shanks and others and Beverly Huffstetler. Mm -hmm. I remember all these names. I've learned so much from you, but I mean, literally, probably going on 15 to 20 years doing this and, and it's, it's good to have you. you. I know you're a very busy man. Man, and you do a great job. So thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Listen, we got some lines open, 737-7587. We've got a couple James. We're going to start with the first James that got through right off the bat. Good morning, James. Good morning, fellas. How y'all hey. doing? Good. Good. How can we help you, buddy? Okay. Here's a, kind of a technical question, but I worked uh, 15 years at uh, Whirlpool at Laverne, Tennessee, and because of the economy, they closed the plant, and we were down to 500 senior workers. So they broomed us out on the street, and um, 59 and a half, I started getting uh, uh, basic Social Security. My wife had passed away, and I was on uh, Survivors, and then I, had, I hadn't had enough uh, um, accumulation where I could collect just slightly a little bit more, but all Whirlpool gave us um, for severance was uh, about two years... Um, Two years pay for every year of work. So if you work 15 years, you get what 30 checks at $500, which was it was nothing. It wasn't anything like the buyout at Nissan mm -hmm. or Ford Glass. Most of us cut less than say 28,000. You know, for all those years of work, and all I collect from Whirlpool is $192 a month mm. plus basic Social Security, which is a, a low bar amount. Would I be up for consideration? From Social Security, where I could get a boost because it wasn't my fault that they decided to close the plant and throw us all out on the street. Okay. All right, and that's a fair question. Um, unfortunately, with Social Security, the amount, the, the decision on how much you get is independent of any kind of decisions that private companies make as far as you know if they close or their severance pays or anything like that. It's th there's no consideration in there for that sort of thing it's it's really just uh how much do you have on your earnings record and they take the highest 35 years of your your record and there could be some zeros in there if if you had some periods where you didn't have any work and they they put that into the equation and that's how they come up with how much it is so really the only way that there would be an increase is if you went back to work and you know added some years to your earnings record does that make sense james no, because uh, I'm 69 and a half now, and I mean, nobody back then wanted to hire a 59 and a half year old uh, man oh. when the economy went kaput. Yeah, no, I understand that, and I, and I sympathize with your mm -hmm. situation. I was wondering if there was some special provision that Whirlpool had done where they had held out some money for Social Security to pay you in some kind of pension or something crazy like that, but if not, just uh, because of that, unfortunately, the way it was handled, I guess it, it, Social Security is independent of that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you could qualify for more. It's all based on whatever it was you earned while you were working, I guess. Well, we, uh, um, we had a union there, and they bargained for us, and I don't know if they bargained good enough for us. There was, uh, yeah. there was rumors of collusion, which I hate to say, but um, yeah. I, was, I, I was in the union, then I was let go as a, as a union steward because uh, I guess I was too feisty representing my fellow workers. So I, I didn't have much say in the vote and that. So next thing you know, we're all 500 uh, yeah. senior workers out of 1,200 people. Yeah, that's hard. Rock minimum, and they broom us out on the street. Uh, you know, uh, welcome to what happens in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, in the old days, you have a loyalty to employees that have been someplace for a long time and pensions and all that were there. These days, it's gone away, mm -hmm. and James is an example of that, and I hate that. Now, I do know um, I have a brother-in-law who worked for years with the railroad. He does not get Social Security. There was, uh, how does that work where certain large entities, the money was taken out of his check, but instead of going into Social Security, it went into some fund, retirement fund, 
within the railroad. I don't know, how does that work where there's certain businesses that bypass Social Security for whatever reason, and he's getting basically maybe a little more what he would have gotten from Social Security, but he's not getting Social Security. Yeah, there, there's uh, two, two examples of that. The railroad is different than anything else. Okay. They, they kind of have a, a different, where they, they have their own retirement program, yeah. but it interfaces a lot more with Social Security um, and, for example, Medicare and things like that. I mean, that, that will show up on a Social oh, Security sure. record. Yeah. So railroad's always a little bit different. Okay. But now the other example is that there are uh, some co organizations that don't pay Social Security taxes. They have their own uh, approved retirement program in lieu of Social Security. Kentucky Teachers is is one is the primary example around here. Uh, the Kentucky Teachers don't pay Social Security. They pay into their own uh, Social Security, and so when they retire, they don't they don't get any Social Security at all. And whether that's a you know pro or con or whatever, I don't, I don't really you know that's kind of a uh, different yeah. decision. But you know there's some uh, uh, the NES around here. They they used to do that, okay. and I, I think they're slowly transitioning over into where all their workers are paying Social Security. So we used to see a lot more of that, um, and and more and more companies who used to have their own uh, program are transitioning into paying into Social Security, like uh, like the majority. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let me get on my soapbox again because I really sympathize for someone like James. Mm -hmm. And I know you don't uh, have to <laughs> offer an opinion on this, but the bottom line is it has changed. In the old days, you used to have companies where they respected um, long-term employees, and if something went bad, you'd get more severance, like James was talking about. Some other places did. They also had pensions in place. Then you had Social Security on that, and then if you could, you could save a little bit on your own, and and, and that's the way it was. Nowadays, heck. Businesses will fight you on unemployment or things like that. Um, pensions have gone away. Severances are much smaller. And we've got all these constituents out here voting, thinking, I want to vote pro-business. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You keep ignoring the worker. And one of these days, you're going to get bit in the butt. And this whole right to work garbage, and that's exactly what it is in a lot of these states, doesn't, it's not a fair system. And it, there needs to be a balance. I think at one time, maybe unions were too strong. Other times, employers too strong. There's, there's no balance right now, and it's unfortunate because people like James suffer for that. Times have changed, folks. Companies, it's the bottom dollar and loyalty to, loyalty to employees, except in rare instances, have gone the way of the dodo bird. Let's go to Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Uh, good morning, Nick. How good are you morning. doing? Good. What's on your mind? Well, I got a couple of questions here for Scott. It's, uh, I don't know how to go about this, but uh, I had a daughter-in-law to pass away. And her son is supposed to be getting a uh, Social Security benefit from her, but the benefit is going to the boy's aunt, and he doesn't live in the house with her. And then uh, the boy is living with the grandmother, and uh, my son is having to, is fixing to have to pay child support to the grandmother, and she calls SSI. And I'm a little concerned about why the girl is drawing the uh, child's Social Security benefit from the mother, and he doesn't live with her at all, and she's getting the money, and then, like I said, the child's living with the grandmother. It really doesn't make much sense, and I think that, for me, and to me, that's fraud. You know, I don't understand it. Got a handle on that? Yeah, so uh, the representative payee, program where where we have to uh, make a decision on who's going to receive the benefits particularly in minor child I'm assuming this is a minor child uh, situation is one of the more difficult things that we deal with because uh, we have a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different situations out there, and it seems like every situation is a little bit differently, a little bit different. Ordinarily, whoever the child's living with would be our first go-to as to who we want to make the representative pay to receive those payments. However, there are some situations where either that person doesn't want to, or uh, may have a representative pay of their own, or there may be some other situations, and I have no idea. Of the, what the grandmother's situation is and they may have chosen the aunt because somebody has to receive those benefits and the Social Security uh, technician had to figure out and make a decision on 
who, who would be in the best spot and be willing to receive those checks. Now, if the child is living with the grandmother and she wants to go in and apply to be the representative pay, that's probably what I would encourage her to do. The technician will take another look at the situation and it may be to where um, we either didn't realize the child, maybe the child moved, maybe we didn't realize uh, the child was living with the grandmother or some other kind of situation. But if the grandmother comes in and applies to be the representative pay, there's a good chance we could switch that over to, to her record. Well, they're trying to hide it, is what I see. Trying to hide it? Yeah, they're trying to hide it because she, she draws SSI, and my son's wife pay her $500 a month uh, child support to the grandmother. And like I said, the other girl the, that's getting uh, Social Security off of the mother is not giving him the money, is not giving him nothing. It's my grandson. And we've asked them to disclose their, you know, benefit of what they're paying, receipts and stuff like that. And they're not wanting to disclose any type of receipt, anything they're paying on him. And the grandson is saying they're not buying him nothing, giving him nothing, or he's not getting no benefits out of it. And they're out here running the roads and doing everything else, going to California, going to Florida, and going to Disney World, and Orlando, Florida, and places like that. But they're not taking him with them. That's what's bothering me most of all. Right, yeah, and, and uh, y you know, they, the best thing I can do is whoever's got custody of the child needs to come in and apply to be the representative payee. We can get that switched over. But, you know, I will say oftentimes, um, you know, the, the, the Social Security payments aren't a lot, of, you know, aren't a lot of money a lot of the time. And so by the time you consider food, clothing, and you know, shelter, uh, that can add up to be quite a bit, and so that we see that in a lot of situations. But again, if the grandmother's got custody, have her come in and apply to be the representative payee as soon as possible, and we can get that switched over to the most appropriate person. Hope that helps you a bit there, Tommy. The number is 737-7587. Talking about Social Security, questions like that, others. Are you applying for disability? Where are you in the process? Do you need some help? Let's go next to, uh, we've got another James. James, good morning. Hi, James, are you there? Good morning. How y'all? Good. What's Good. on your mind? <laughs> I'm retired, and I've gone back to work part time. And I was just wondering if my employee still has to take uh, Social Security and Medicare out of my check. So I'll hang up and listen okay, to y'all. Wait, wait. Just uh, so we're clear. Hold on. So, so you retire? How old are you now? I'm 72. Oh, okay. And so you're you're taking you're collecting your full Social Security retirement, and you've gone back to work. Yeah. And so, since you're going back to work, will they be taking taxes out for Social Security is what you're asking since you're of retirement age? Yeah, Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, explain to him how yeah, that works. And unfortunately, the short answer is yes. Uh, everybody who works uh, has to pay Social Security and Medicare, uh, even if they're already receiving it. Uh, basically, it's kind of two different situations. You know, when you're, when you're working and you're, and you're earning money, and they take those taxes out to support from everybody, I mean, they don't make any distinction. It's just everybody who works pays into the Social Security funds, and then from that funds, you know, is, is paid out to, to the folks who are drawing so, uh, retirement today. And for a long time, and even now, I'll get questions. Some folks uh, think that the way Social Security works is I'm paying into my fund. And so as I work and I earn, mm -hmm. I'm paying into my fund, and then when I retire, I'm going to draw from my fund. Well, th there's no such thing as a my fund. What, ha what it is is today's workers are supporting today's retirees and it's yeah. and it's always been like that and that's kind of where we run into you know here in 2034 when the trust fund runs out there's going to be fewer um, fewer workers supporting the retirees I as far as the ratio there's going to be about two to one instead of where it used to be four to one and yeah. five to one that's tough hey, now I understand uh, he probably didn't like the answer to that question but I understand why he asked him right, where it came yeah. from there is a potential upside where this could, since he is paying into it, increase what his Social Security benefit is that he's drawing on. That would be if some of his earnings he's making mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. bump one of the lower earning wages from his years in the past off the list with this new one that's a little more money. It could mean a little more money for him, correct? That's right. You know, we take the highest 35 years. Yeah. Of, of indexed earnings, so we take all your earnings, we bring them up to today's numbers due to, and, and adjusted due to inflation, we figure out the highest 35 years, and that's what uh, we use in the calculation. Now, if you had a period of time where 
you didn't have any work or you had low work or limited work, uh, you may have had a 10 year period where you just really didn't do much because of whatever situation, life situation happened and then you keep on working into retirement, it, will, it could bump out one of those low years or another prime example is uh, sometimes uh, parents will stay home with their kids for an extended period of time yeah. and so they may only have 20 years of work. So, so that's, this adds 21 this which adds, could be more money. That's exactly it. Okay, now I don't know, I'm guessing at his age perhaps he's doing a part time job but if what you're earning now is more than maybe you earned when you were a kid years and years ago, uh, you know, uh, James, it'll bump that off and put your new earnings in there and you will see an increase in your, so it'll be modest, mm -hmm. but you'll see more money in your social security check. So that can work out. So listen, we'll take a break on that note when we come back. It's cool that I know that stuff. I learned that, how that works. I and mean, that's inside pool, but that's good stuff to know. Uh, when we come back, other callers, Jeffrey, if you're others on hold, stay there. We've got lines open if you want to jump in with Josh Horn right after this. The Storm 5 H